Okay, so welcome to this quick presentation. If you hear any wind noise, traffic noise, children screaming, I'm sitting in the den, which is not particularly soundproof, but uh, anyway, that's not the point of this. So what we've got here is the Data Color Spider Checker 24, which I've exposed for 18% gray according to false colors. So this is supposedly correctly exposed. I then left all the settings exactly as they were, except for ISO, which I changed here to 1250. I changed it to 1600 and 3200. So in theory, the 3200 ISO shot is three stops overexposed from 18% gray. So let's go back to here. Now, what I've done is I've used the uh, data color matching software. If I just go to here and just turn this on, I've used this to um, match the colors. So if I now turn that on, you will see that uh, that's color matched accordingly. And therefore the exposure as according to the waveform is now ideal for that particular color chart. So let me get rid of this because it's distracting. Okay, so now we go through the ISO 400 shot, the color matched ISO 1250 shot, the color matched ISO 1600 shot, and the color matched ISO 3200 shot. And as you can see, they are all pretty much exactly the same. I mean, there's so little difference in them. It's incredible. Now, if we look down here at the, the waveform, you will notice that when we come to the ISO 400 shot, it's a little bit furrier. If you watch this section here, it's a little bit furrier. When we switch to 3200, it actually seems like there's less noise according to the waveform. 1250, 1600, 3200. And going back to the 400 shot, it looks a little bit furrier. So that seems to show that there's perhaps more noise on the ISO 400 shot, which is exposed apparently correctly. So I'm going to zoom in here. Zoom in, bear with me. So zoom into this point here and we're going to have a look at the noise. So this is our noise at ISO 400. Let's get in very close there. And then we switch to 1250 and there's less chroma noise for definite, but the if I go back to the ISO 400 shot here, the grain on this may look a little bit finer, but on the 1250 shot, there's definitely less chroma noise. And if we go on to the 1600 shot and the 3200 shot, it looks pretty much the same. So let's go back to 400 and play that so we can see that in real terms. So that's at ISO 400 and we'll go to 1250. This is ISO 1250. So in effect, there appears to be less noise at ISO 1250, which was overexposed and then brought back in post. And if we look at the ISO 3200, which is three stops overexposed um, from 18% gray and play that, that also appears to have less noise than if we go back to the 400 shot, than this. That definitely appears noisier. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. It looks noisier and it appears noisier according to the waveform. Um, there's also no difference, which you may like to know, that if I come down here to the color settings, um, if I go to the 3200 shot, I've, I've left this at zero on the exposure and all of the um, changes, if you like, to exposure and color have been done in this one node using the color matching chart. But if I then go to the same thing, but this is negative three exposure, I've changed it here and then done the color chart change. If we switch between those, it is absolutely identical. There's not a trace of difference. So it appears to make no difference whether you change the exposure here, as we've done on this, or change it in, in post using the nodes. It doesn't seem to be any difference at all. It is absolutely identical. Okay, so now we have this shot, which is 1.8 stops overexposed from this shot, which was our 18% gray as according to the false color on the camera. So this was shot at F9.9, 160th ISO 400. This was the same, except it was shot at F5. So accordingly, we're 1.8 stops in difference between those two shots. So, um, 
Let's have a look at that color corrected. Let's compare the two. This is the original ISO 400 shot, and this is the shot at F5, 1.8 stop six. But there is a difference. If you notice these colors as we change, definitely, definitely change. But let's take a look down at our waveform, and you can see these have got curves on them, which normally indicates there's a vignette for this particular lens f5 is wide open so let's compare f5 to f9.9 .9. obviously less vignette in f9.9 .9. so let's take that into account but anyway those two shots there we compare the noise let's have a look let's come in okay so this is our shot that's 1.8 stops overexposed from 18% grey and we'll compare it to the original shot so let's play that you can see there's more noise straight away but let's play that and let's compare it to the latest shot which is overexposed and brought down in post let's compare that so there's obviously a lot less chroma noise there's a lot less noise in general okay so the next shot is um Everything left exactly the same as far as uh, shutter speed and aperture, but I've increased the ISO to 1250. And the ISO 1250 is in the secondary range of this particular camera. So let's have a look at the noise on that. Okay, and let's check that back to the original exposure. So there's a lot more chroma noise on there. So ISO 1250, overexposed. Now, this works out to an overexposure from the original shot of about 3.5 stops. So this is that ISO 1250. Now, let's compare it to the other shot that was overexposed, but ISO 400. And let's check that one out. That's the noise there. And this is the shot at ISO 1250. So... It appears, and especially if we look here down at the waveform, if we switch back to the uh, ISO 400 shot, that it looks a little more furry again. There seems to be more definition in the ISO 1250 shot. So it appears that the ISO 1250 shot, when it's dropped back in post, uh, three and a half stops in, in difference, but only between these, there's a difference of about 1.7 stops. It appears that the uh, higher ISO shot has less noise when brought back in post. So there we go. I don't know what to conclude from this other than the one thing for sure. It certainly changed the way I expose the camera. Expose it as far to the right as possible. And don't be frightened to go up into the next stage of uh, ISOs because it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. And you'll end up with a cleaner shot at the end if you push it as far to the right as you can. Obviously, you cannot overexpose, but pushing it to the right, do not fear it because you will end back roughly at the same place you started if you try to expose it in the normal ranges, but you will certainly have less noise. That's what I conclude. I'd like to hear from you and tell me what you think. Okay, cheers, guys.